good for all the positive cues as well. Of course, the dollar index is helping, but uh, the unlock trade seems to be working. Let's ask the expert. Arvind Sanger, Managing Partner, Geosphere Capital Management, joins us. Uh, once again, Arvind, thank you very much for staying up for us all the way in the United States. Uh, well, we are seeing the number of recovery cases going better than the number of new cases, COVID cases in India, which means the curve seems to be flattening. Is it time to pay, play the unlock trade? Have you started buying any uh, on that theme? Uh, we are uh, quite fully invested uh, in our India portfolio versus, uh, let's say, a month, month and a half ago, where we were sitting on a fair amount of cash. Uh, but I will say this, that uh, our uh, portfolio in India has, uh, other than healthcare, uh, and maybe some portion of uh, uh, auto-related uh, uh, exposure and cement, uh, most of our exposure is more outward facing, whether it is uh, pharma or it is uh, IT or it's other kinds of companies or, or, people, or companies that benefit from uh, uh, China uh, manufacturing moving from China to India. Those are some of the themes we're playing. Uh, again, we play bottom up, but uh, you know, uh, we pick individual stocks and we are somewhat, uh, we are very underweight uh, the financial sector because uh, we are somewhat skeptical about a V-shaped uh, recovery, no matter, you know, the worst in COVID is uh, probably behind us in India, uh, but there, there could be other waves as we go into the winter months uh, later in the year. Uh, we're certainly going to see that, uh, I think, a lot of Northern Hemisphere uh, developed countries in U.S. and North America and Europe uh, come the fall and, and winter. So I think that uh, the COVID situation is going to be around for a while, but hopefully there's a vaccine on the way. And sometime in calendar 21, uh, maybe we'll be looking at it in the rearview mirror. So the market with all the liquidity provided by uh, by the Fed and by ECB and by uh, you know Bank of Japan and, and other central banks, and then uh, certainly RBI has done a little bit to the extent that they could, uh, markets are not going down. The question is really about where the earnings will deliver in the coming, not in the next one or two quarters, but in the next one or two years. And yeah. that's where we remain somewhat more skeptical about some of the sectors in India where the economic damage from COVID is going to last for a little longer than, uh, okay. than the healthcare challenge. Yeah. Uh, Arvind, good morning. You know, that's the, the theme that I wanted to discuss. For example, autos. Uh, now, you know, some of the stocks like Ashok Leyland are now more expensive than they were uh, in their heydays. Uh, so what is this market factoring in? Of course, 21 is washout. Uh, 22, there's some recovery. But uh, is this irrational exuberance? Is this too, too, uh, too fast, too soon for some of these stocks like Ashok Leyland or even say something like an aviation? Or you think this is, this is the right way to approach some of these stocks? I think this is a little bit of rotation going on, and we're certainly not chasing it. Doesn't mean that the stocks can't go higher, right? But uh, in terms of really building up to these valuations or getting an economic recovery of any meaningful magnitude, uh, certainly if you're talking about the aviation stocks, the hotel stocks, or anything else, you know, related to that, those sectors, uh, and to a smaller extent, Ashok Leyland, which is more, you know, dependent on industrial demand. But I think in either case. I think uh, even FY22, which will see some recovery, uh, is going to be, you know, not, uh, it's going to be hard to justify valuations based on that. So you have to look out to FY23. And the reality is that with, you know, interest rates as low as they are, investors are going to speculate. But let's keep in mind one other somewhat concerning data point that has uh, recently started to come out of India, which is uh, an increase in inflation and certainly core and headline inflation, uh, CPI, are both uh, not headed in the right direction. And therefore, one of our concerns is, uh, you know, not only is the fiscal deficit a problem, but now if inflation becomes a problem uh, uh, and recovery takes a long time, then I think uh, domestic uh, demand for all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, goods and services uh, could be somewhat more tepid in its recovery uh, then uh, what, you know, uh, market exuberance may lead, lead us to believe. Okay, that's important, uh, the rise in inflation. Arvind, hi, good morning. 
the the big theme that everyone's watching out for is the shift of manufacturing from China to India, and you briefly referred to it as well. Uh, can you delve a little deeper into this? Uh, what are the stocks that you'd be looking at? Is it in you know the capital goods space, names like L and T? Are you looking at consumer durables, the likes of Whirlpool, etc.? I mean, how do you play this theme? Well, you know, uh, I normally don't talk about individual names, but you know, we've we've owned uh, uh, this one company for the last two or three years, uh, which is uh, really a play on uh, you know, uh, manufacturing things as uh, varied as uh, you know, washing machines and uh, lighting systems and what have you, and that stock's been on fire uh, uh, because uh, you know now the uh, the whole talk is about uh, more insourcing of. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, handsets uh, for you know uh, uh, for smartphones, so you know you you you're going to see a lot of different areas: uh, air conditioners, smartphones, other electronics, and and there's many ways to play it. But you know, in terms of the really large cap headline names like uh, L and T and others, I think it's harder to find that than it is in more special situations. Because uh, unfortunately, I can't make the case that it's going to be a gold rush to India in a massive way that you know that everybody's going to come here but i think in areas like electronics clearly uh we have to maybe find more names but that could be an area where you could see uh, uh more you know uh, manufacturing move to india okay well i have three uh, questions for you let me start with the first one you know uh, even the normal hindustan unilever or britannia or nestle have are likely to grab a larger market share because uh, MSME competition, I mean unbranded biscuits or whatever you uh, want, to, want to say, are off the table now. So do you think that the big can get bigger under the uh, scheme of things? Well, I mean, that certainly seems to be a trend that probably will hold. And, and I think the smaller are going to suffer from a couple of things. One is, as you've seen more stay at home, there's been more of a you know, comfort factor in going for brands rather than uh, taking risks and going for unbranded or or lesser known brands. I think unbranded, uh, you know, uh, from the uh, modern retail, uh, their own store brands are doing fine, but in terms of some of the second tier brands, they have suffered. So I think that that's been a bit of a COVID effect. Uh, whether it'll last as things turn normalize is hard to say whether these, uh, you know, uh, kind of brand comfort, uh, is that a temporary phenomena or will that last long? I, I don't know the answer to that. I think one of the other challenges for some of the second tier players is in a time of you know, financial and other stresses, do they have the ability to compete uh, in terms of uh, you know, being able to spend money on distribution and advertising? So those are some of the challenges that will face. So I think uh, some of the brand names could win, but I think in general, consumption and consumer, uh, while there's been a shift in wallet from you know eating out to eating at home, and some of those things have benefited some of these companies, uh, I think that as we normalize, some of those tailwinds uh, will subside, and therefore you know growth rates in FI22 uh, for at least some of these areas could could see a little bit uh, uh, of a you know uh, of a tougher comparison uh, as COVID COVID recedes. So there is a little bit of a one-time effect. So we're looking for secular themes that are going to work uh, beyond the immediate benefits that they'll get over the next, uh, you know, three to six months, okay. continuing from so you're, COVID related, okay. either voluntary or involuntary lockdowns. Okay. The short point is you're not ready to pay higher valuations for the Nestle's and the Britannia's because you want to see whether uh, the uh, shift to brands lasts. Uh, That's but, right. Uh, we're not convinced that it's sustainable. Okay. The other point I want to ask you is, you know, this is a note that has come from Morgan Stanley today, that now that there is a broader recovery, mid caps and small caps will outperform. Will you look in that basket? Absolutely, uh, we've uh, we've looked at a lot of uh, the, a lot of our portfolio it has a bigger concentration of mid caps, small caps with with clean balance sheets and good management. You know that that's critical. It's not uh, let's roll the dice and find the riskiest mid-cap and small-cap, there may be money to be made there, but we prefer to play with names where we feel comfortable with both managements and with uh, balance sheets. Uh, probably there'll be more money to be made taking some risk on the balance sheet side, but we're not that confident and not willing to take that risk. But in terms of size, you know, we're looking for companies that are purer plays on some of the themes we're talking about, whether it's a China outsourcing theme 
or it is uh, you know uh, the India facing healthcare theme. There are companies that are not in the large cap space, and therefore I think some of the uh, names that we like are, are end up being uh, in the mid cap space. And I think that uh, again in a in a zero interest rate global environment, a close to zero interest rate global environment, uh, you are going to see risk appetite. Uh, but I think. Uh, it is very much a show me growth driven market. So we don't want to just buy value stocks for the sake of value, but ones where we feel mm. that growth can deliver. Oh yes, in fact, you know, mid caps have really taken the lead already. It's like, if you see the last two months, there's a massive, massive bull market on in the mid caps. This month, the mid cap index has outperformed the Nifty by a good 6%. Now, Arvind, uh, you know, should the reverse logic work for pharma? You know, this year, could this be the peak earnings year? And especially for a lot of API companies and the kind of you know blockbuster earnings that we have seen and the kind of re-rating that we have seen, do you think that's a one-year sort of phenomenon? And uh, is it time to book profit here and move to some of the other stocks, or this secular bull run in pharma you think will remain intact? Well, pharma is a little trickier because the stocks, the API-related stocks, have had such a great run. And the thing that makes us nervous is that it's become very much a consensus trade, right? Right now. So there are two things. One is the short-term benefit from you know uh, uh, from people having uh, drugs that might benefit from uh, COVID-related you know work going on or COVID-related treatments that may benefit. But the longer-term theme is is there some of the API uh, you know companies that will benefit from again it becomes uh, uh, moving away from China, uh, uh, removing sourcing uh, you know. Uh, channels from China and moving into other countries, Indian uh, pharmaceutical industry is well placed, and that could be a secular theme. So the challenge for us is how much is the short-term boost, how much are the valuations uh, that have run up so much, and what is the long-term thematic benefit? So this is, if you ask me one sector where we are having the hardest time, we have a little bit of exposure, do we stay with it or, or are we run too far ahead? That's what I, my crystal ball is, uh, is uh, uh, you know, such that I'm, I'm kind of staying in, but nervously staying in because uh, there is too much bullishness right now. Okay, Arvind, we've actually run out of time, but thank you so much for joining us and giving us your views. It's not only the uh, pharmaceutical space, but the online pharmacy business that's gathering quite a bit of pace right now. We just heard Reliance Retail buying 60% stake in NetMeds as well. We'll talk about that in greater detail. In the meantime, the other stock on our radar this morning is Z Entertainment. Uh, the numbers came out yesterday. The revenues came, uh, they were largely in line with estimates, but the operating performance was actually lower than estimates. Rohit Gupta, the Chief Financial Officer of Z Entertainment, joins us now first up to chat.